Hey everybody, Chuck and Stacy here with VO Buzz Weekly. I uh, hope you guys are having a good day mm -hmm. or night, whichever it is. Yes. And uh, thank you to all the uh, new subscribers. We really appreciate you doing that. Mm -hmm. And those thank of you, you that haven't subscribed, if you're l watching the show and digging it, please subscribe. We'd totally appreciate it. Absolutely. And on the show, we have Sid Highwind from Final Fantasy, Chris Edgerly. Let's, Let's get, get buzzed. Buzz. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to Feel Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacey J. Aswan. Our guest personifies versatility. From stand-up comedy to animated TV shows like The Simpsons and films, promos, commercials, and over a hundred video games. Thank you very much. He's flat out awesome. We're so happy to have him here. He is getting buzzed with us. Mr. Chris Edgerly. Yes, yes, Chris. Welcome. Thank you. Get down. Thank you for having me. I can't Absolutely, live up to that. Man. Yes, you can. This is going to be one long letdown Look after that intro. Look at your fantastic shirt. <laughs> you, got the, you got the whole thing going. My wife yes. picked this out. It's cute. She said you need to wear something happy. <laughs> Yeah. Patterns make now, if Stacy was wearing full good. white, we would be red, white, and blue right now. We would right be now. go USA. Oh, would be or awesome. you would be blue-ish. Or go no, France. Blue, some blue. True. You yeah, know, doesn't really... Dig it. When are you doing the Tour de France? Is it this summer or next summer? As soon as I can clear those drug tests. Nice. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, in the meantime, we'll talk about your other little tiny career sure. that you have going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, you go ahead, Chuck. Oh. Because I feel like I'm, I'm going to hug Chris. Well, let, let us... Why like don't you it. tell us about your... Um, your career path, man. I mean, did you always want to be an entertainer? Pretty much. I mean, we're artists. You kind of know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think anybody pushed you into this, no. did they? Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I didn't know I wanted to be a musician, for example, till I was 13. And you heard Peter Frampton. Right. And I heard Peter Frampton. <laughs> but you must have loved I rock did. music. I did. I did. You were drawn to yeah. it. You were drawn to I've read about you. Your your dance. Yeah. You were, was it roller? Roller skating, skating artistic like roller national skating. or yeah. world champion. Not roller derby. I didn't knock people down on purpose. Yeah. But that'd be kind of. It cool. was artistic, allegedly, because the rhinestones. These are artistic <laughs> and the velvet. I like that. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, ever since I was a kid. I mean, you just, uh, you kind of, you're born with that, mm -hmm. and I was always cracking my brothers up, and friends, neighbors, whoever, yeah. always wanting to sort of hold the floor and tell mm -hmm. stories, and my nickname as a kid was the Mouth of the South. The nice. Mouth of the South? Yeah, that was what my dad called me. Wow. So, Savannah, yeah. Georgia's never been the same. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yes. And the reason why I know that it is something you're born with <laughs> is because my son is exactly the same way and he's really? six. Wow. And he's already, like I went to, when he was in preschool, he Genetic. was three. Yeah, I went to go read a story for the class. I never asked him to do this. He got up, stood next to me, and helped read the story to the class. I thought, wow. well, yeah. gonna have to get him his SAG card soon, so. Right, is he aware wow. of, of what, does he watch your work and go, that's dad, he's has he a, made that connection? He's a, yeah, it's because I point it out to oh. him. It's like I brag on myself. Of course. I'm still like, dad's in that, that's dad's Shh, voice. This here. is daddy's part. Shh. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah, everybody shut it. Daddy's gonna rewind the DVR. <laughs> that is a double-edged sword because now it's, every show is, did you do a voice in that? No. No, son. No, yeah. Daddy lost that. <laughs> no, Daddy lost, lost that, that one. Well, too. no, no, uh, no. Daddy didn't teaching get that him the good and the bad of friends. the business. Yeah, yes. yeah, let's concentrate on the work Daddy has done, <laughs> yeah. and not what Daddy has yeah. booked. Okay, that's let me tell right. you about booking ratios, my boy. Okay, they're oh, not that high. That's the next. That's life hysterical. Lesson. Yeah, man. exactly. So yeah. Ever since, ever since. I couldn't remember when I didn't want to do it. Good, man. Mm -hmm. And what, uh, in, in particular, like voiceover, how did that happen for you? Like when was your the, the time where you said, wow, I want to do this thing? I think, like I was always aware, like you grow up, you watch Warner Brothers cartoons. Yeah. You mm -hmm. think it's great that those voices are there and you walk around imitating them as best you can. Mm -hmm. But not until I was living in Orlando. So I moved to Orlando after college and I'd gotten into stand-up. I was doing that a little bit. I'd booked a, you know, a little bit of on-camera work there and I had toured a little as a stand-up. And then I found an agency in Orlando that represented some voice acting work. And there's not a lot there, but I was able right. to get some. Yeah. And I realized that this is great. You can stay in town. You can sleep in your own bed instead of being on the road. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you've done the road. It's, yeah. it's kind of a chore after a while. So after I eventually moved here, I did a few more years on the road, but after about 10 solid years of being a road comic, I really missed 
just having the consistency of being in one mm -hmm. town, yeah. especially a town like this one. Yeah. yeah. If there's a town yeah. you want to be in all the time, this, this is yeah. this is a good one. Yeah. Well, and I've so, heard you say that Hollywood is like high school without teachers. Yes. What do you mean by yeah, that? Yeah, explain that. <laughs> it's a, it's exactly what you think it means. It is not a compliment. Um, <laughs> not, no way. No, uh, you know all the cliques from yeah. high school? Yeah. yeah. The nerds, the cool kids, the jocks, mm -hmm. you know, the meatheads, the, the, the troublemakers. It's the exact same thing, except mm -hmm. there's no adult to come in and say, hey, Be cut nice. that out. Stop yeah. that. Yeah, you shouldn't be that way. It's like, no, no, as you were. Yeah. Keep doing exactly what you're doing, wow. except the people who are sort of on the yearbook committee kind of run the town now. Right. So yep. you have to, you can't right. give them noogies anymore. You know, you got to sure. be nice to them. Because it'll live on the internet forever. Oh, yeah. 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 And I was kind of one of the dorky ones. And so I, you know, I don't know where I quite fit in because I went to an all boys military school. Mm. So the Get usual out of here. Clay, Not yeah. everyone can say that. That's bragging no, rights. No, not man. everybody does say that even when it happened. Yeah. <laughs> they kind of let that, you know, go. But uh, yeah, I, I realized that. Uh, it's the age-old story. If you don't want to get pounded, you know, because I was always pretty small, you got to learn a sense of humor mm -hmm. as your armor, yeah. you know, and that's the way you're going to make friends. And so, yeah, um, that that was a nice uh, defense mechanism I had. Yeah. It's worked out. Yeah. 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 Is stand-up comedy, and, and plus, you, like you said, you were on the road. Right. Is it really as grueling as it seems it is? Well, what you see on TV and what you see on stage if you're just in a club is about 1% mm -hmm. of the job. The other 99% is the writing, the trying that bit out so you can get it to work, the getting the gig booked. Like, if you're just a comic in L.A. or New York and you only stay in L.A. or New York, right. you've got to hustle just to get stage time until you can become a regular. And yeah. I never went that route. I went the opposite route, which is getting road gigs, mm -hmm. which is just as hard because you start as an MC, and the MC is the guy that starts the show. He's the guy with the least amount of material and experience and confidence, and here's a cold crowd, go. Yeah. You know, so he or she is the one that just gets torn to shreds for a while. Right. Mm -hmm. And when you finally take enough of that abuse, and you finally start to put an act together, you start to move up, and then you're a feature act, and then you're a headliner, and that takes years. Yeah. It's extremely rare that somebody does it in just a couple of years and to become a headliner like after 10 years on the road I was starting to headline consistently but not every single gig and that took 10 years mm. and that was overnight success yeah exactly <laughs> so <laughs> when you're in your 20s all of it's kind of fun yeah, yeah. even when it's brutal I mean you guys yeah, must exactly. remember your you starving days mm -hmm. in your 20s you don't know how broke you are yeah. you don't know just how bad you have it because yeah. you're so thrilled to be doing it yeah, you but feel nice your, and fit because you're like, oh, exactly. I'm so fit and tiny. You can get by on bread and ramen. <laughs> right? And stuff that people bring home from their restaurant gig. Crab you know? service. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'll eat half of that manicotti. Yeah. You know, sure, it's been out for a couple of days. I'll eat it. It's I got fine. nothing else. Yeah. There's no mold on it. Right. But in your 30s, mm. um, it kind of becomes a chore. Yeah. You know, and yeah. I would say I had hit the wall by about... 33, 34, I said, yeah. yeah, enough of this. And yeah. luckily I had gotten representation. I had started to get some work and I thought, I'm, I'm, I'm done with the road. It's, this is gonna be voiceover or nothing. Mm -hmm. I like Cortez, I burned my ships. I walked into yeah. my agent's office and I just signed with him and I said, look, I got 10 or 12 gigs booked for the rest of the year, I'm canceling them. And they said, you don't have to do that. And I said, no, I wanna do that. This has to work out. That's yeah, good. I, I'm gonna make this work. We're gonna make this work because <laughs> yeah. I ain't going back out. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. this is too good of a job to pass up. So, uh, so Chris, um, <laughs> I get a lot of guys, man, calling me up and saying, hey man, I'm a stand-up comic, I do uh -huh. comedy here and blah, mm -hmm. blah, and they're doing like shows here and there, maybe mm -hmm. they've been doing comedy, but they really now want to do something with voiceover mm -hmm. because right. a lot of their buddies are doing it. Right. So is that, in your opinion, is that a natural transition to for a comic to be able to get into, into voiceover and be good at it, or? It's not unnatural yeah it's not always the fit they think it might be mm. but a stand-up comic somebody who's really been doing it yeah. and who's had to deal with the slings and arrows has an advantage over a straight-up actor because they already should have some mic awareness mm -hmm. as right. you know and musician you gotta know when you're not giving them your best angle as far as acoustically yeah and you also get a feel for, I mean, so much of our copy is, is funny. Mm -hmm. 
copy. Yeah. You get a feel for where the joke is. You get a feel for how to play it. Mm -hmm. So much of commercial copy, I mean, more than half of the commercial copy I read is humorous copy. Yep. So getting that joke is invaluable. Comics get the joke. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so much of an audition, like an on-site audition, a lot of times is being able to just flip that switch because you'll spend some time in the weight room and at least, thank goodness for this, voiceover audition weight rooms are not the sharks in the water experience that on True. camera yes. weight rooms are. If on anything, cameras, you're like, okay, I gotta focus. Stop yeah, talking to me, you know, because yeah, you're having because, a good time. Exactly, and that's the funny thing I notice is that with a lot of people at the agency, when you go and you sit and you wait for your turn to read, I just start shooting the breeze with everybody. Mm -hmm. right. And some people are really kind of trying to get into their copy. And my right. wife said, I went with you once to the office. <laughs> everyone, not everyone, but a lot of people were studying their copy. They handed you yours and you just set it down and started jawing. And then you walked in and you picked up your copy and you just went bam, 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 like that. Is it because that's how I operate? Yeah. yeah. I don't have an intensive process. You're not an overthinker. Yeah. No. So when we do the 20 steps of Chris Edgerly's process, we're not, we're going to get to what, like two? You start at one. Yeah. Now let me and ask there's you. This <laughs> shortcut there, to here 19 it is, ready? and a half. I read it. And then I book I it. Yeah, that's it. how it yeah. goes. Yeah. Well, yeah. the you book so that I can prove to my son that I'm you a book, yeah. no. Chris books a so, lot of commercials. I love your Pier One commercial. Oh, thank I mean, you. He books a lot of commercials. That was yeah. on the set. Really? They had me on the set yes. for that. You know, and I, I thought, don't you guys know that it's? I mean, I guess it's going to be important to you. Yes. But it's never going to sound like that when you do it. But here's the funny thing. I'm on the set. We're at an actual Pier 1 yeah. in Hollywood. I should have stolen that rooster out of there. <laughs> I Because I wanted to buy it, and they you... said, the store's not open right now. Yeah. I said, can I just <laughs> but, can but, I take but I'm it? I'm here. Yeah. Like, it I wanted to keep that rooster. It crawled into my coat. Yeah. I know. You, you nailed that rooster, man. Why, thank you. Well, that didn't sound right. You say that where I come from, and <laughs> they'll... Yeah. It's a different response. You did um, a great job so, of that. So, yeah. so, so, so for you... Um, we're still back in the comedy versus, versus <laughs> yeah. acting. Stand-up comedy, yes, can be yeah. an easy transition if you also respect the fact that an actor must know the copy and you can't always just deviate from yeah. it. Yeah, now that's what I was going yeah. yeah. so, right. so to ask you. So you're not you, the writer, the writer's the writer. Did you end up like you know working a little bit with acting and, and getting your acting chops up? Is yes, that... I was a drama minor in college. Okay. I was going to be a drama major, but I transferred from a smaller school and they said, we'll take about one third of your credits. And I said, well, I'll <laughs> see you later. Yeah. And the journalism school took all of them and I said, well, I'm a J school guy now. Yeah. yeah. But I did a play or two, and I took a couple of acting classes, yeah. and I'd done some on-camera acting. So I had a basic feel for it. Yeah. I am not as nuanced as a lot of people you've had on the show who have a lot of on-camera credits. I have yeah. some. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're all from the 90s when I had hair. Yeah. <laughs> what yeah, exactly. It's yeah. overrated, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You've got those beautiful eyes. Oh, you why, don't thank need hair. You. Uh, the and then shirt. on the same token, <laughs> like, were there things from your comedy side that, because you did that for a long time, mm -hmm. were there things from your from your comedy side that you're like, you know what, this part of it doesn't really work too well in the voiceover, yeah. it doesn't translate very well. Are there th little things like that that you had to kind of like balance out a little bit? Sometimes, yeah, I think sometimes you have to, um, you gotta pull it back a little bit because when you're on stage, as you guys know, a live stage performance, mm -hmm. you gotta play to the whole room. Exactly. Yeah. You know, you gotta you gotta reach the back of the room. You don't have to do that in voiceover. They have levels, they have a mic, they'll modulate it, they'll they'll bring it up when they need to, they'll bring it down when they need to, and it's almost like film acting, it's here. Yeah. You know, you mm -hmm. don't need to use everything. You end up using everything. I don't know about you guys, but on the mic I'm I'm a madman. Yeah. Man. yeah. I, I use, use all body, my body yeah. parts. Yeah. Make it clear so everything. yeah, you do have to you have to tweak. You have to mm -hmm. tweak. The um the rest of the process I think is the same. Yeah. But you have to filter it for where you are. If yeah. you're on stage, let it all hang out. Mm -hmm. But if you're in front of a mic and it's a voice acting audition or performance, you gotta you gotta focus it more. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. you have, we literally, uh, we have fans all over the world. Mm -hmm. And I know you've been asked this question like 5,000 times. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're a really good friend of yours, uh, okay, said to you, hey, Chris, man, I really. Those don't exist. I, I know, but if, they, if you had a friend and he was pretend. a really good friend and you actually yeah. liked him and he <laughs> said, hey, Chris, man, I really want to get into voice acting, man. Mm -hmm. Would you guide me through it? What are some of the first things that I should do in order to start off on the right track? What's some advice you can give to people out there about that? 
I would tell them the first two things we talked about. Try stand up if you think you're comedically inclined and get into an acting class. Mm -hmm. Just because you have a nice mellifluous voice, yeah. just because you have a nice mean, baritone. Oh, today it means nothing. It means nothing. It yeah. means Jack. It yeah. means people enjoy hearing you talk and yeah. that's about it because how do they know you can act? How do they know you can understand the copy? How do they know you can take direction? Tell how a do story. they know that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're telling a story. Yeah. Right. Even if you're doing, I, I mean, almost all the storytelling um, uh, copy I get is for an insurance company. You know, they'll. They, it's a product that's the most non-story-like product you've ever heard of, but they're going to tell you a story about their company, and they want a storyteller. Yeah. yeah. And it's the blandest product you can imagine. So you've got to take it and make it interesting. Yeah. If you're a guy who just has a kind of a cool sounding voice, you're not going to know what to do with that because mm -hmm. you're going to be stiff. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, get used to performing in front of people, get used to being able to interpret, you know, and get used to being able to take whatever experiences you've had in your life and put them on that microphone. Yeah. You know, That's and yeah. don't be afraid to be judged for it. Yeah. yeah. Be vulnerable. Yeah. You know, you got to be able to practically make yourself cry, if not on the outside, on the inside when you're delivering something devastating. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's there's no shortcut to that. Yeah. Would you say yeah. that that you almost have to eliminate a little bit the fear factor and just go mm -hmm. for it and not sure. think about what somebody else might think? Or Sure. Yeah. yeah. And everybody cares what other people think, no matter what yeah. people tell you. We yeah. all care. We wouldn't be performers if we didn't care. A performer connects with people. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I care what they think. Yeah. Yeah. I've even told people in other interviews, sometimes you do a performance for a character, or maybe a beloved character on yeah. a video game or something. Half of the people love what you did. Half may hate you. And my stance is they're allowed to hate me. They're yeah. allowed to hate what I did. Well, they're invested. Exactly. Yeah. So if they don't like it, yeah. They can get on Twitter. They can get on YouTube. They mm -hmm. can say whatever they want. It's I've already been paid. I've already had the, <laughs> the I, check is yeah, cleared. I don't Therefore, have to I was great. The, yeah, I don't have to give the check back. <laughs> yeah, you know, sorry it didn't uh, connect like, with you. But, yeah. Could you imagine if you had to get, give a check back <laughs> oh if you had enough thumbs <laughs> down? If you had that, would be so many. Or if you got a boost, if you had thumbs you up, know what? maybe we should yeah, start that. Yeah, exactly. Give That's this video you, a thumbs up, right? This video <laughs> yeah. surge, you get ten percent increase. That's, That's when you'd start to play it too safe. So oh, yeah, true. even if you're afraid, do it scared, as they say. Yeah, yeah. fear is a good motivator. It is. It fear is. makes you. Uh, it makes you really alert. It's just a different flavor of excitement. Yeah, that's all it is. Yeah. Use it. You have this very, very unusual gig with The Simpsons mm -hmm. that you've been on the show now for what, like eight, nine seasons? This is my ninth season. Your we're ninth season. Yeah. Congratulations. You're Thank like you. the utility guy yeah. of of The Simpsons where you do so many freaking voices, mm -hmm. probably hundreds. He's the right? voiceover handyman. He's the <laughs> voiceover handyman. You heard it here first. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So Need a wrench? He's got uh, it. Need yeah, a ratchet? I, he's got it. I've always thought of my role there as a Swiss Army knife. If they just need a random voice here or there, yeah. you know, yeah, that's that's what I mm -hmm. get. You know, there's an episode coming up where we did the table read and there was one thing in there for me and I thought, great, this is going to be fun when we record it. Yeah. I know what I'm going to do, but sometimes it just comes up, you know. It's like, yeah. oh, here's a, here's a crowd scene. We're going to pick this person out and he's going to say this and all right, you do that, you know, yeah. and uh, it's usually not that random. It's, it's planned, but yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's just it's it's being around the rest of the cast and and filling in wherever they need me to you know and just filling things out i mean yeah. that cast yeah. is the most insanely talented yeah. cast there is absolutely man i don't i don't think they need much help yeah they, know, they really but, don't in but, fact you were so cool man t in inviting stacy yeah. and i to, oh, my to, pleasure. to a, a table read, read. Yeah, so it's my and pleasure. i remember I, first of all i've never been to a table read for this for the simpsons mm -hmm. it's great. and it was absolutely magical because everybody is beyond awesome. Mm -hmm. Everybody great. is so great. And the co that was the first time I've ever yeah. heard mm -hmm. and, and watched, but heard an episode of anything right. and gotten so into every tiny little word mm -hmm. that I enjoyed it thoroughly, man. Mm -hmm. It was so cool. That's what table reads are really for is to get a live audience around the actors, and this is a, a lot of shows do yeah, this. Yeah, sure. And mm -hmm. the writers are there taking copious notes. Which jokes are landing, which jokes are not. Is the storyline working? Is the structure solid enough? And between that table read and the time you go in and record, there sometimes there are changes. Yeah. Things didn't yeah. quite work, yeah. you know, and this is the proving ground for it. Yeah. So you guys were part of determining 
what was going to be recorded cool. the mm-hmm. following the following Monday. Yeah. And so I love bringing people in for that experience. That's so cool. That's and fun. then we had the other privilege of seeing oh, yeah. you go in and do some ADR right. uh, for the show, which was so freaking cool. Yeah. Obviously, you do that a lot. Every now and then, yeah, they'll say, okay, you did this character on the record day. There's been a tweak here and there, so now let's re-record it with this. And you know, sometimes you're doing it to picture. Yeah. Sometimes you're doing it to an animatic, which is just sort of a black and white halfway process. Yeah. But yeah, and sometimes you're doing it and the episode's gonna air in two or three weeks. You know, Other times it's six months away. Exactly. The table reads typically can be nine months to a year before that episode's air. Really? Right, right. Yeah, so you're, you're seeing a, an earlier stage. And I don't know how long they'd been working with the script up till then. So right, it's, right, right. you know, I mean, you've had Nancy on to talk yes. about the process. I'm sure yeah. this is kind of what she shared, you know. Yeah. Well, the, actually, yeah. we asked her different questions that we're yeah. asking you, Chris. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so she she talked more about all of her awards. Yeah, and... I can't talk about all those Emmys. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. She's such a doll. Yeah. She's, she's such great. a doll. She was one of our, what was like, our third very, guest. Very, very first. Literally okay. our third guest. I mean, and it was amazing. she embraces Bart. She oh is the she most is Bart. yeah generous mm-hmm. giving person when it comes to that. Kids were there today at the table read, and I said, "Oh, wait till Nancy comes in; she'll do Bart for you." And sure enough, I looked over my shoulder, and Nancy had found them, and boom, she's doing Bart. She's signing stuff. Yeah, oh. you know, she's great. She's wonderful. Yeah, loves that. Well, to ride on this rainbow, <laughs> um, ah. <it's> rainbow. <laughs> when the Chris Edgerly rainbow, the Chris mm-hmm. Edgerly rainbow, uh, rainbow tour, catch it. Um, when Nolan Norris. Mm-hmm. Was here, Hello. and I love that episode, by the way. Fellow CSD Pride, yay! Um, he spoke about the times when things aren't so abundant, yeah. and mentioned when you guys were probably put in all the crown molding in Valencia. Yeah. Um, so, how do you? <laughs> and have you navigated the that's ups a, and the downs memory. of this? Well, here's the funny thing. Career. At the time, I was a single guy. Yes. Not even a girlfriend. <laughs> I was just dating. Just you and the crown molding, just, baby. Yeah, exactly. And I even had roommates back then. I think this was around 04. Okay. And I didn't need a lot of money to just sort of be flush with cash. And so right. I was doing okay. I actually didn't really need the cash, but I needed something to do. Yeah. I was I was eating my own brain with boredom. And so he said, dude, I'm going to put up some crown molding in Valencia. <laughs> I said, I am in. I, I'm in. Let's hit Taco Bell on the way there and boom, you know. And I know nothing about crown molding, but it, it's not that hard. Yeah. You, know? yeah. But you get the level. Yeah, you know. exactly. He had a miter saw. He had yeah. his pickup. We we drove around, you know. We we did a couple of houses. We did jokes and cracked each other up. And, and you I just can't, charmed I can just it till it was straight. What that yeah. been like. Do you ever go like ring the doorbell and go, hi, uh, we yeah. used to... Is yeah. that yeah. what you guys did? And... Would you like some cream, uh, <laughs> cream, <laughs> cream pie? Cream no. molding. Uh, <laughs> crown molding? <laughs> yeah, I mean, technically, <laughs> I look in a house now and I look at the crown molding and go... Eh. Eh. Yeah. We could do much better, I could have done yeah. better than that. Yeah. No one and I could have done it. Me and, yeah, me and Drake's fortune could have done better than that. Exactly. Have, you, yeah. have you had... Sid and Drake, crown molding. That would be a great job. <laughs> have you had company. any odd jobs in your life that were like, you know, something you could talk about? <laughs> I, have had, I have had 15 jobs in my life. 15 oh. jobs. The very first job I ever had yeah. at McDonald's. Back in '86. Wow! All were you the, the way. Fry guy? To, uh, I was every. When you're at Donald's, at McDonald's, you're every. You're every. You start on fries. You go to chicken McNuggets. You go to burgers. Mm-hmm. You go to sweeping out the cooler. Okay. You do it all. Uh, they never let me near the register. Oh. Funny yeah. that. Yeah, it's like eh. the background check was a little sketchy. Is yeah, that whatever what? you do, you don't stay like back there guy. near the stuff that can burn you for a life. <laughs> uh, you don't need to be talking to the people. Oh gosh. Um, yeah, they didn't let me near the cash register, but mm. that I worked at a hardware store. I worked, didn't know anything. They kept bouncing me around the different departments. Yeah. I once used the paint mixer without securing the lid. Oopsie. And got a little paint bath <gasps> no. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a short-lived job, huh? That was a couple of months. <laughs> <laughs> I worked in a pool hall. Uh, I got fired from that. You know, um, I worked in the weight room in my dorm in college, just oh. cleaning up the weights, spotting Wiping people when they the needed weights. it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I worked, the very last job I had, Ed, when you're kind of in the performing arts, you eventually just drift over to waiting tables. 
because yeah. that's the job you can do. You don't need a lot of training, and you can pick up quick cash, and exactly. that's it. But and yeah, leave your I, days right. typically open. And, right. Yeah. I worked at an Olive Garden. I worked at an Applebee's. I worked oh. at a rib joint. My very last job ever, I worked at Disney in Orlando. I worked at the Whispering Canyon Cafe inside oh, the Wilderness wow. Lodge in wow. Orlando. Magical. And yeah, until they fired me. How I got long fired. You get fired a lot. Yeah. This I made is the it glamorous. That's why yeah. I like voiceover because nobody fires him. This from is the only one that works. Did you not yeah. secure yeah. the plate to your hand, or how did that work? What? This was actually a hard job to get fired from, <laughs> but I cracked that code. Yeah, you cracked um, the code. Yeah. You were because, so tenacious. Yes, Good. yes. I uh, like at that job they wanted you to kind of be a performer. Yeah. You know, right. you're at the Whispering Canyon Cafe. It's very cowboy. It's very wild west, and you know, and you sing songs and you tell stories, and they want you to do your accent and dress up like a cowboy. And mm -hmm. I would miss work. Like I booked a job on uh, Sequest DSV. That was my SAG job. That mm -hmm. was in Orlando. I booked that job, so I couldn't make it into work. I was late the day they planned on firing me. So they said, yeah, look, you missed this day, you missed that day, you were absent here, and then well, you, you were here, late like, for your own firing. And, uh, and security you said, guard true. escorted me off. Yeah, true. <laughs> By God, you're doing the right thing, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's all we have with uh, Chris Edgerly Part 1. We're going to be back next week with Part 2, so check it out. Yes, and please leave us your comments below, and uh, don't forget to subscribe. We love you guys. Thanks for watching, and just remember, you, you always, always have, have time for a little buzz. buzz. Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit DemosThatRock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for...